see here. And uh, I wanted to make a stone fireplace that was going to be a permanent structure. And the things I wanted to accomplish in this project were a uh, recessed electric fireplace insert, a uh, recessed TV not directly mounted on the surface area. Uh, I wanted to use some kind of natural stone. And I want to add some accent lighting, uh, some recessed accent lighting to this. And my biggest problem was weight constraint since this is on the second floor. So what I first started doing was I got some plywood and I cut it out to the shape of the fireplace and this is half inch thick plywood and I pretty much transferred all my measurements onto the wall so I knew where the center point was at all times. And you can see I built this directly onto the floor that I had the existing hardwood floor. Ideally maybe you would want to cut that out but I didn't want to have the additional work. So I went ahead and I uh, built it on top of the floor. Uh, and as you can see here, the way I did this because of the weight constraint and I was on the second floor, I did use a truss system. I probably should have removed the uh, drywall in the back and so my studs would line up and screw directly onto the stud. Um, but I didn't want to do that work, uh, so I figured that it wouldn't be a big deal to just go ahead and put these studs against the uh, drywall and then nail them in and screw them in into the wall studs. This is an exterior wall and it's not really uh, plumb, so you can see I used a lot of shims. Uh, and it's very important to make sure everything is level and plumb, especially the framing, because that's going to be how you're going to build this, this fireplace. And if you're framing, your underlayer is not exactly plumb and leveled, everything is going to be off. So the most important thing is to make sure that everything is leveled. So at this point, I felt really good at what I have accomplished and gave me more uh, confidence to continue. I'm not a professional carpenter. So what we have here was a tremendous accomplishment for me, and it gave me the motivation to keep going. And uh, the way I did this project to make it easy for me is I did it in sections. Uh, as you can see, I did the bottom section first. I added two sections to the left and to the right, and I kept building up. Um, and it's all two by four construction, 16 on center. And really by doing this in sections, it just made things so much easier. I cannot emphasize how much easier it was. And just seeing the sections go up one at a time and seeing the framing being transformed into something that could potentially look like a fireplace. Here you can see where the fireplace insert is gonna be. And it's very important, the rough opening for this fireplace that you take into account the materials that you're gonna use to wrap around and figure out how much room you're gonna have for the insert. So when you're doing the rough opening, make sure you have at least uh, two to three inches bigger on your rough opening than the actual uh, uh, fireplace. And again, we get a good look here at the truss system. Uh, and here you can see I used um, heavy duty um, SDS uh, connector screws. And that's how basically I nailed the framing onto the wall and then onto the stud that's behind the wall. You can see I added some block in here for the TV recess. At this point, once the framing is all set, I was gonna use air stone, uh, culture stone, and then somehow during the project, my mind was made up to use natural thin veneers. And I just kept building this uh, section by section. I found that to be the easiest way. You can see here on the right, there's three sections. On the left, there's two sections because the ceiling is at a slant. Um, again, all 16 uh, on center construction, uh, 2x4s. And here we get a better look at the uh, blocking that I used and the truss system. Um, I used extra support. Uh, some of it is probably a little overkill, but I want to make sure this is going to stand the test of time and I want to make sure that this is not going to collapse. Um, as you can see here, I used the old fireplace uh, to line it up and figure out how high the mantle was going to be on this new fireplace. And here you can see this stud right here uh, is screwed to the wall and then I have extra blocking and 5 eighths just so the two columns are the same width. Because on the left, the last stud on the left doesn't catch anything so it's just there for blocking. Uh, and now I started off with the cement board, it was a half inch cement board. I ended up putting a uh, sheet of plywood here at the bottom, but uh, uh, I would then cover that with another piece of uh, cement board. I also have a conduit here for uh, anything that I want to run, such as HDMI cables. So um, basically started building this and putting the cement board. 
so I wanted to go ahead and add accent lighting. So I put one light in the center because I had all my measurements on the wall. So at any given point, I knew what the center point was. So I put one light in the middle and then two to the sides. And this worked out perfectly. And I cannot stress enough how happy I am to put accent lighting because when you use the accent lighting, it just gives it a different look. It just changes the whole perspective of uh, the natural stone as we'll see. And then the next thing to do was the mantle. I looked online, this mantle's going for $250 to $500. So I figured, let me buy some pine, uh, which is what I did. Uh, cut a 45, basically make it look like a box. Um, and then uh, to mount this, what I did was I took a 2x4, I stripped it, cut it at a 45, and made what's called the French cleat, which you can look on, up online how to do. Uh, basically, that bottom piece is going to get screwed to the firewall. A framing and then the top catches on so the top right here as you can see will catch on to this and it'll prevent it from falling forward and that's gonna give it a lot more support uh, and this is called a French cleat um, I'm sure there's other names uh, but that's what I use and here you can see I tested it out and it actually was pretty good it was steady even without any screws or anything like that just using the French cleat system and you can see there's a better look here and how I did it uh, that piece the top piece got glued to the uh, mantle and then the other piece was screwed into the framing so as I was doing this mantle I had an idea of putting some kind of light underneath the mantle uh, to give it some accent light underneath the mantle and here you see this channel here this was created uh, with a router and uh, I was gonna go ahead and put All right, a strip so I just light. finished with the uh, cement board this is the last piece I had to put right here I have this uh, fiber tape uh, which you can see here and I need to use this tape and all the seams. So all these seams right here need to have some tape. Then we'll go ahead and mud it with tin set. Uh, you can see some of these big gaps right here. I need to make sure that there's enough uh, tin set in there. And uh, here's the corner that I was gonna fix. I have four cement boards meeting. You never really wanna do this. You wanna stagger them. But uh, since this is not um, a bathroom, we don't need this to be watertight. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put some tin set here first then put the mesh tape and then some more thin set um, and I think that should be fine uh, again this is something that these four corners you don't want to do and I did this site first and I for some reason didn't pay attention to that and I left it as that um, over here you can see there's some big gaps what I'm gonna do there is fill it with thin set first and then I'm gonna put the mesh tape so I'm just gonna put the mesh tape where I can right now gaps like that that's fine uh, and notice what I did was this one has an edge guard I put the edge guard out so it would help me even a little bit more. As you can see here, there's that piece of plywood. What's going to happen, this is where the hearthstone is going to go on top of. And I cut it out to the shape of the hearthstone. I didn't want to wrap it around so that's what I did. Um, here I'm pretty much finished uh, with a cement board. And uh, this was a paint to cut but I measured it inside and cut it outside. And then uh, like I was saying, all along the seams you want to go ahead and put this fiber tape which is what I did on the edges, anywhere there's a seam. Uh, you can see on the left corner here, I put a lot more because I needed to pad that out a little. Okay, so this leads me to one of the biggest blunders I made. Um, to get the stone, because I knew I was going to use a natural stone product uh, attached to the cement board, I went ahead and bought this uh, ProLite um, thin set. And you can see here, it does natural stone. I wouldn't recommend this thin set for outside applications, but because it's inside, it's not a big problem. You really want to buy your mortar or your thin set to the color of what your grout line is going to be, or to at least match the rock or the stone that you're using. It was a mistake using white uh, mortar or white white tin set because it got all over the stone and you could really see so it. So here we have the strip light and that's what that channel was for. I'm putting the strip light on the channel. Here we see the controller and this is going to be controlled by Alexa as well and by my phone uh, and because I wanted to get that under, under the mantle uh, lighting and here I am testing it and you can see it looks pretty good. Uh, that makes a difference too as we go on and it does change colors and I think it looks you know it looks pretty good. It's something different that not a lot of people have. And here I am testing the uh, accent lights. And again, everything is controlled by Alexa. Um, I would end up changing those lights uh, to different bulbs. Um, but, uh, you know, as you can see, it's working. And then what I thought about inside because of the weight constraint, uh, I didn't want to put rock here on the back. So I bought this uh, uh, these boards here from uh, the hardware store. And I basically just went ahead and uh, nailed them in uh, because it's lighter, you know, save some uh, weight. And they're gonna get nailed in uh, to the back of that cement board right there and to the top as well. This right here is where all the connections are right there uh, for the electricity. 
The next step was to go ahead and look for the stones. There's many stones, culture stone, natural thin stones, and then I ended up finding this uh, stone here at a local uh, stone place. And this is local stone to my area, it's basically granite. And I just love the colors. And for the price of $1,700, uh, for all the stone that I needed, uh, it comes with the corners already cut for you. I thought it was a really good price, especially some of the cultured stone is very expensive. And then as you can see, it came here in two pallets, and I did get more than I needed. I actually ended up with a pallet of stones that I didn't need, um, a little less than a pallet. But uh, as you can see, the stones are cut uh, by hand, and they vary in shape. They're not perfect. You can see some of the corners here. Um, they're cut by hand, not perfect at all, but this is stone. So it's natural stone. It's thin stone. It's about, um, I would say, one and a half to two inches thick. And uh, this is what you have to work with. Um, and it's a natural product and I let them acclimate a little bit uh, in the house um, I, I just basically work with this stone with a chisel and a stone hammer and what I, I ended up doing is I did the corners first and as I was doing the corners it became apparent to me that I really did mess this up by using a white tin set I should have really considered using a gray tin set and I could already start to see some of the white tin uh, thin set on the rocks and I knew it's gonna be a problem as we progress that I have to clean it's gonna dry and I hope you don't make this mistake get something that's gonna match your grout lines or something that's gonna match the stone um, I am gonna use a gray grout here and it would have made so much more sense to use uh, a, a gray tin set but you know you learn from your mistakes and I'm hoping this video uh, you learn from my mistakes and you don't repeat them as well but it's very important here to start off at the corners I did put a little bit of uh, as you can see there some uh, shims just to hold it up and as you can see I started building um, from the corners inwards so with the bigger pieces of stone I made an edge all around with the fireplaces going I think that you know makes it uh, look a little bit better a little bit more finished look and here on this column here the biggest thing with this column is you want to make sure that it's very easy to put one stone on the left and one stone on the right and then what ends up happening is you have a vertical line going down on the column and you want to avoid that so that right there took a lot more work to make sure that you are breaking the stones and you don't have a line going down where the column is you want to stagger these stones you don't want these stones to have like a line going down and here what I'm doing is uh, my friend actually gave me this hard stone so I didn't have to pay for this it's pure granite it's heavy and what I'm gonna do here is um, actually just use uh, construction adhesive in this case it's just liquid nails is what I had and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, glue this directly into the uh, uh, plywood. Uh, I was thinking of putting a piece of cement board here, but I went ahead and just glued it on there. You're not gonna step on there, so. And here you can see, I'm uh, finishing off putting that those pieces of wood. Um, again, just to save weight, I put it on the, the back, and I put it on the top. I wanted to keep the columns uh, wrapped around in rock, because I knew that was gonna add it's just gonna look good when the TV was there. So with the tin set, I really did do some sloppy work with the tin set. I put too much in certain areas and less is more sometimes, but you know, I don't do this for a living, so I actually did feel like I used more tin set than I should. Here you can see at the top, I try to create a nice little edge all around with some of the stones and make a little, kind of like a little design here on top. And here we get a different look at the column, and this is the first column I did. It's not, you can see there's a sort of a vertical, it's not as good as the other columns, but I was able to break this up by putting little stones where I saw the vertical line. And you can see here on the right column, I did a lot better job. It doesn't have that vertical line. Another thing, you want to make sure all these stones are leveled. You can see the small level on there. You want to make sure all of them are leveled. Um, you don't want them to sag or to lean one way or another. Level the stones. Make sure you have your corners uh, nice and even, as even as possible. That, that makes a difference. And you can see some of the shims I have on the rocks here and there. So here you can see a lot of the tin set that was transferred onto the rock. And this I had to use a wire brush to get this out. What a mess. I mean, again, I cannot stress to you how important it is to use the right color tin set underneath. Okay, even if you're stacking the stones. Uh, and here you can see I added some more stones just to break that vertical. But I'm really glad that I bought these stones with the corners. It just makes your job so much easier and it looks more professional. Here we can see that it's pretty much done with the stone. And at this point, I'm like, wow, it really came out good. Here we are finishing some of the electrical. And that's where I have that uh, conduit right there. 
um, that's if I ever need to feed any HDMI or extra power wires. And what I did here on that wood, um, I went ahead and polyurethane it just to give it a little bit more protection. And here we get to one of the worst parts about this uh, project, and it was to do the mortar. First of all, it was just everywhere, it made a mess, and what ended up happening is, as you can see here, the tip would get dry, so no mortar would come out. I would have to force some of the dry mortar out, squeeze a little bit out, and then redo it again. And once you stopped, if you stopped even for a second, the, the tip would get hard. So I don't know if anyone knows any tricks on how to prevent this, but this was a big problem for me. Not only did it make a mess, it was a little frustrating, but the tip kept getting hard, and I have to keep squeezing the tip out. So what we're going to do basically is uh, scrape off the excess mortar that you can see here and I'm just taking the uh, brush here, the handle and just going like that here and just removing all the excess and then what I'll do is I'll go over it with the brush and just get it smooth like that. I don't have, The brush I have is not that good but that's the idea. I already did this side and you can see what it looks like. Of course it's going to get cleaned but the idea is to get grout as much as you can uh, in all the areas that need grout. And then I'm using this brush right here to just to brush it off. You can see what it looks like, right, as we do it. Some of these areas I'm gonna have to go back. You can see that's the kind of look that we want. So after I clean out the grout, this is what it looks like. Uh, it's just obviously gonna go ahead and cure and change color. And then I'm gonna go ahead and clean it. Um, I started over there in that corner and I didn't follow the same technique. So it's a little bit hazier at the, uh, on the rock. Um, but uh, I'll clean it and then it'll look good. Um, it's a mess. Um, you can see at the top there, there's a the no grout area. And then at the bottom where I grouted. And uh, you know, there's a reason why people don't like the grout. It's a mess, it makes a mess, you can see. Um, I have to clean all this up afterwards. But I mean, um, I'm hoping that when this is done, the grout is gonna really make a difference here. All right, so now after uh, scrubbing these rocks and getting rid of the excess mortar, um, you can see it's still pretty hazy. Um, so what I'm gonna do, and it's kind of dusty in here, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start cleaning this with some warm water. And um, I bought this right here, this uh, intensive black diamond intensive cleaner for stone and tile. Um, let's see what happens. This is what I'm gonna use to um, hopefully get rid of some of this haze and bring out the natural color and then I'm gonna go ahead and seal it. So I looked for a product that would make that stone not look as dull and hopefully get some of that natural color out of the rock. This is where I made probably the biggest mistake of this uh, project. What I did here was I ended up getting a uh, color enhancer and sealer when in reality I probably should have just got a wet look sealer. Uh, but this color enhancer, what it's going to do is it's going to change uh, the color of the rock uh, dramatically. Uh, and no longer it's going to be light, it's going to bring out a lot of the darks as we're going to see here in a second. I started looking at this and I started noticing that the color changed dramatically but instead of stopping wiping it off even more I continued to go ahead and brush this sealer on. Um, once I was done applying the product I kind of looked back and this is what I saw and at this point uh, in the project uh, you know I don't I, to be honest with you I almost kind of want to like just cry uh, because it was so bad and you can see the colors are so dramatically changed and they're dark and it just it just doesn't look good so um, I was uh, at a panic here I didn't really know what to do um, I advise you to test whatever product you're gonna seal the rock with um, on a separate piece of stone so what I ended up doing is I called my friend, the guy who supplied the um, hard stone, and he told me, use acetone, it'll get rid of some of that sealer. But unfortunately, this is two weeks after, and I couldn't get uh, as much as that sealer out as I uh, could probably have done if uh, I did that within the first few days, the first few hours. But as you can see, I tried and tried. I must have cleaned that with five times with the acetone. And you can see it has made a difference on the rock. And finally, I was able to get some color out of it. And it wasn't as dull and black, as uh, dreadful as it did before. It started looking a lot better. And at this point, I was, you know, happy. But 
um, you know this is a big mistake that I made and uh, again I can just not stress enough that you should always test the product the sealer or the enhancer on a piece of stone before applying it to the actual um, uh, project the actual fireplace once I was finally happy with the color after cleaning it it was time to put things together and you can see I got a 55 inch Sony Bravia um, I got a HD antenna and then I got the Echo Gear TV bracket and you really need this TV bracket if you're gonna have a recessed TV you need the Echo Gear and at this point it took me eight months for this project to finish mainly working on the weekends and this is what the final result looked like So at the end I was really happy how this project turned out and it was uh, to me it looks a lot better than this standalone fireplace and it's going to add value to the house. And this project cost me around I want to say uh, three to four thousand dollars about thirty five hundred to four thousand dollars. So this added value to the house uh, it looks better than the standalone fireplace and I'm quite happy with it. Um, everything here that you see is controlled by Alexa. So if you found this video informative and you got some information out of this, please share the video, put a thumbs up, and uh, just leave a comment. Tell me what you would do different. Tell me where I messed up or didn't mess up. I'd love to hear your comments. And if you enjoyed this video, like this video, subscribe to my channel as I talk about and make videos about all sorts of different subjects. So I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel and uh, thank you for watching.